Okay, um, trigonometry, the sine rule. Before we look at the sine rule, uh, let's have a look at the four quadrants and the unit circle. Now, four quadrants are using the um, um, number plane. So it goes uh, to anti-clockwise. The first quadrant is the um, on the right-hand side corner there, and then the second is going anti-clockwise, and the third and a fourth. That unit circle is just a circle with a radius of one. Let's have a look. Okay, push up a little. Okay, so as I told you before, now first quadrant is where all the x values and y values are positive. Second quadrant is where x values are negative but y values are positive. And the third quadrant is the uh, x value is a negative, also y value is negative. And the fourth quadrant is x value is positive and y value is negative. Now we are dealing with trig which is the angle so it's going to start from the x-axis on the right hand side, so we 0 degrees, 90 and 180 and 270 and back to 360. Okay, so that's what um, sums up what the unit circle uh, angle is about. Now let's have a look at unit circle now. Okay, so I've got all this. Um, as I told you, now this looks really complicated, but it's not. So don't panic, it's not too bad. So I'll put the um, point uh, P1 here with X1 and Y1 as are their coordinates. Now that is radius and it's going to be 1, remember? Unit circle is the circle with a radius of 1. So all the radius will be 1. So let's focus on the first quadrant here and I'm going to find the sine theta 1, cos theta 1, tan theta 1. Now remember Sokotoa? So here I'm going to have, what is it? Y and that's X, X1, Y1, okay? So here will be, sign will be Sokotoa, so O over H. So it will be Y1 over H is the hypotenuse. So I might just put one there, I think, because it's one there. Okay, so if you think about all that, Sokotoa, should I put Sokotoa here so people can remember? Okay, so as you can see, that's positive, that's positive, that's positive. But that makes sense because first quadrant, X, all the X values and Y values are positive. So all the trig ratios will be positive. So all of them, all three trig ratio will be positive. Yeah. Second quadrant, let's have a look. Now, point, second point, P2, X coordinate has to be negative. Yes. But Y coordinate will be positive. So when we do Sokotoa, it's going to have affected wherever it's X going to go. So that's a cosine and tangent because it, you have to use x values that would be negative. So only um, trig ratio that is positive will be sine. So I've got this my highlighter. I'm going to highlight this. So that's going to be positive. So all three here, positive. Third quadrant, again, but both of them, both coordinates are negative. So sine and cos will be definitely going to be negative. But tan is what? Rise of a run, which is y over x. So negative divided by negative is positive. So that's going to be my positive, isn't it? So y over x is a positive. Fourth quadrant, only the y value, y coordinates, is negative. So only thing with a y value in it is to be negative, which is sine and tan. So cos will be positive. Okay, so that means or sums up will be like this. I think a lot of you have probably heard about this or station to city or station to Canberra or station to um, Canterbury or something like that. So first quadrant, all three trig ratios are positive. Second is only sine. Third quadrant is tangent. And the fourth word is cosine.
So just remember, all is for the first one, and second one is the sine, third quadrant is tangent, and the C is for cosine of fourth quadrant. Just to help you to memorize things easily. Now let's have a look at part two, Tri trigonometric ratios of obtuse angles. Obtuse angles is what, between 90 and 180. Of course, 90 is not included and 180 is not included because 90 will be right angle, 180 will be straight angle. Okay, so what happens here is you need to memorize this. So when we go to obtuse angle, it will be between 90 and 180, which is in the second quadrant. Okay, so when you go to the second quadrant, we need to think about how we're going to find this obtuse angle using this theta. It's obviously 180 take away theta will be the obtuse angle. So we put it as sine 180 take away theta equals sine theta. Now, how do we know this? It just easily just, you can check with your calculator. So it will be sine 180 minus 30 is same as saying sine 30. So that's what 150, isn't it? Sine 150. So if that's 150, and that's a sine 30, and it comes at same. Okay? Same as cos, same as tan. The only thing you have to remember, because it's a second quadrant, remember all station to city, cos, the second quadrant, only positive is sine. So cos, sine, and tan will be negatives. Okay? So remember this formula. Okay, so little notes there, as what I told you before. All right, third part, let's have a look at the third part. The angle formulas for each quadrant. So what happens here, it's gonna be a little bit confusing, but that's a theta, and from all the angles it starts from x-axis here. And that's why obtuse, isn't it? Which is 180 take away theta, we just talked about that. And then if it goes to the third, if it goes to the third, up to here is 180, isn't it? And then you're adding the little bit of theta here. So the third will be 180 plus theta. And then if it goes all the way to fourth quadrant, and that little bit left is a theta, we can just say 360 take where that theta will be it's in that fourth quadrant. So that, that sums up into this. Also, you need to memorize. Now, I add a little bit extra bits. You might be wondering, what is that? Now, up to here is a 360. What happens if it goes more than 360? Can you see the pattern here? Theta, 180 minus theta, 180 plus theta. And the next one is the 360 take away theta. So it's going up by 180. So the next one is 360 plus theta. The, the next quadrant will be 540 take with theta because I'm adding 180 to 360, which is 540. And always take with theta first, and the next quadrant will be 540 plus theta. And that if I add 180 to 540, it'll be 720. And then keep going and going. Okay. And just before we start the examples, naming the sides and angles of a triangle. So when we name the vertices, corner angles, we put capital A, B, C. But the side and opposite to the each angle is a small letter. Okay, just remember that. Okay, let's start the example one. So if cos 80 degrees equals 0 0.174. Evaluate, find cos 100 degrees, which is obtuse. And then the second part is if sine 55 degrees is 0 0.819, find the value of sine 125. Now, before we get into this, let's pre make some prediction here. So cos 100 is obtuse, and it's gonna be on the second quadrant. Sine 125 is obtuse, it's gonna be on the second quadrant. What happens in the second quadrant? Only um, trick ratio is um, 
positive E sine. So we can say that's on the negative. Yeah. So we need to change that to positive, which is 180 take away whatever the theta. But let's have a look. We're going to use the formula anyway. So that should be okay. So cos 100 degrees is obtuse in the second quadrant, as I told you. And so we're using the formula cos 180 watt. 180 take away what will make 180? Okay, that equals minus cos 80. Okay, from the formula we previously. So that's cos 100. And remember, cos 80 from the question is 0 0.174, but it's minus because it's in second quadrant. So the answer should be negative 0 0.174. Just remember that. Next one, again. Sine 125 is obtuse in the second quadrant, but the second quadrant sign is positive. So 180 take away what will make 125? 55. And that will be just positive sine 55. So sine 125 equals, as we mentioned in the question, 0.819. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Now let's get into the sine rule. Now we are ready for sine rule. So let's have a look. The sine rule is used to find unknown sides and angles in non right angled triangle. Now remember this if it was a right angled triangle, we don't need to use sine rules at all because we can just use Sokotoa or Pythagoras theorem. So we don't um, use right angled triangle anymore. That's why we need sine rule. Now this is what sine rule look like. This is for finding an angle. So unknown angle, we put the, on the top, and then if it's unknown side, we put the side on the top. Okay, let's have a look at the quick clip proof. Proof of this um, formula. And proof, triangle ABC, draw perpendicular AD, and call it H. So this is a di diagram I just draw the, from the instructions there. From triangle ABD, ABD is a triangle here and we'll just look at it. Our goal to proof is sine B over B equals sine C over C. So we need to have a sine B. We need to have sine C, don't we? So let's have a look at the sine B, sine C. So sine B is what? So katoa is a so O over H, O over H, so H over C. Now I'm going to put in terms of H, I'm going to make H the subject and then from triangle A, C, D, I'm going to find the sine C as well, O over H, no, I mean O over H, yeah, which is uh, H over B and then I'm going to make it in terms of H, why? Because we need to make it into equal, so we want to find some common side which is a H. So I'm going to make a 1 equals 2 and then we will get to here and then how are we going to get into the um, ratio, the fraction form? I divided by BC and that will give me the ratio of a sine B over B equals sine C over C. Now, this is also true, okay? So I'm going to do that. Oh, that's my dog barking. Okay, so matching the angle and side for the ratio, just make sure you do that. So angle A is matching with side A. Angle B is matching with the B, which is sine B. And also, same as vice versa. So A over sine A, B over sine B, C over sine C is the same thing. Let's start the example one. Let's see how it goes. Now this video is going to be a little bit long because there's a lot of examples in there, which is good for you. So let's have a look. Find the value of x correct to one decimal place. So we got this. Now, I'm going to matching. It's important you need to match up this. So if as long as we're matching the angle with the side, we can use sine rule. So I'm going to put that in. There you go. So that's what it is. And then making the x the subject. And we'll get the answer. Now, part B, it says find the value of theta. Now, when it comes to the angle, you have to remember 
that you're on a calculator, you have to use a shift and sign. Okay, because I know it's a sign because we're using sign rule, but it can be cos or tan. And then it's acute angle, so remember that. And also it's going to be degrees and minutes, so you'll need to use a DMS button there. So let's have a look at the diagram. So I'm going to match up that. Excellent. It matches up nicely, so we can use a sign rule. So that will be this. Now here, I have to be careful when it comes to this. I have to move the sign to the other side of the inverse um, sign and remember here you have to use shift sign and here you need to use a DMS okay all right next one part C hmm so triangle ABC has angle B equals 53 degrees and AC equals 7.6 centimeters and BC equals 9.5 centimeters Find the angle C to the nearest degree. Now, this is an interesting question. You have to be very careful about this. Why? Because if I'm matching this correctly, if I'm matching the angle and I don't have angle A and I have to find angle C. So that's going to be a bit of a thinking process. So we need to planning or thinking about this. To find angle C here, we need to find angle A first so that we can actually use angle sum of triangles. So if I can find the angle A and I don't have angle B, C will be easy because it's angle sum of a triangle. Then we can find the C. Sometimes uh, it question might not be a matching uh, angle with the side straight away. So you need to have a bit of a planning. Okay. So let's do the um, angle A first. To find angle A, I'm going to use a sine rule. So angle sine A over 9.5 equals sine 53 over 7.6. And then sine A equals, I'm going to transfer 9.5, 9.5 on each side. And again, when you find the angle, you do shift sine. And then what? You need to press DMS. Now, this is the interesting part here. 87 is not the only answer for this. Why? Because when you use a sign rule, do you remember all station, all station to city? Now, if it's on the second quadrant and sign rule, you can have acute angle and obtuse. So that's my acute, that's my obtuse. So you have two possible answers. So I've just summed up a little bit. When using the sign rule to find an unknown angle, there are two possible angles, two possible solutions. One acute and one obtuse. So we need to check, okay? This is called the ambiguous case of the sign rule. So we've got two possible angle A's which means you will have two possible angle C's. Okay, so when angle A was 87, angle C will be 40 degrees. When angle A is 93 degrees, angle C will be 34. Now I need to check this one. If I check two of angles out of three angles, it's less than 180, I can accept because of there's a room for a third angle, okay? So that's all good. So angle C is a 40 degrees or 34 degrees. Okay, example two. Did I tell you this video is gonna be a little bit long? Yes, it is, okay? So you can pause it and have a bit of break and come back. Okay, triangle ABC is equilateral, which is all sides equal or angles are equal. With a size 63 millimeters, a line is drawn from A to BC where it meets um, BC at D. An angle DAB equals 26 degrees and 15 minutes. Find AD and DC. Now, first thing you need to do is sketch. Sketch the diagram. Now, I've sketched the uh, equilateral triangle, um, indicating that it's got the same sides and same angles. 
and then I follow the instructions from the question and I've done the um, drawing the um, AD and then I have to find the AD in triangle ABD ABD okay and I'm um, I need to find okay so I'm just gonna match up here so I need to know this angle don't I to find in order to find AC AD now how am I going to find this angle it's simple in triangle 180 take away 60 take away 26 degrees and 15 I will get the third because the angle sum of triangle is 180 and I'm going to keep this one as uh, to the nearest minute to, for accuracy of the um, answer. And then I'm going to use sine rule to find the AD. Because then after finding the angle D here, I can match up with the ratio. And the answer will be 54.7 millimeters into one decimal place. And then B says find the DC. Okay, I'll just re-sketch the uh, triangle. Now, let's have a look. Angle um, Triangle A, C, D here. And I have to find the C, D here. So, if I I've got the answer from uh, part A, 54.7, I can match up with this. And I need to match up this one, don't I? And I need to know this angle. Mm. So... What do I do? Hmm. I can see what we need to do. That's angle is a 60, isn't it? Because this is equilateral. That's a 60, 60, 60. And the little bits of it is 26 degrees 15. I can confidently find angle C, A, D. That's what I've done. And then I'll just use the assign rule to do that. And that's the answer. Okay, example three. Again, this is going to be a long one, so I'll have a break and then come back if you need to. Okay, in triangle ABC, find angle B to the nearest degree. And then given is the three uh, parts. Now, angle, we have to find angle, so we have uh, two possible angles. And then if we have to find angle, we need to use shift and sign. Also, it's a degree, so it's a DMS button. Okay, part A. I um, have to sketch this triangle to do this. So maybe I'll just cover a little bit. So I sketch this, and I'll put all the information that was given to, to us. And then sign B is the one we have to find. So I'm going to match up with this. It's a very important you're matching up the angle with the side to use the sine rule. So sine B is 7.5 over 7.5 and sine 67 over 7.2, da, da 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 And then up to here, 74. And then it's not the end, is it? It is a, one of the ambiguous case. So it's on the second quadrant, which is going to be sign is a positive as well as a first quadrant first quadrant was 74 second quadrant if it's in there it'd be 106 and i check this and it makes sense it's other way it works let's have a look at the part b now something different about this angle a is already obtuse angle isn't it so Let's check whether we were going to get two possible angles or not. So matching is important, as I said before. Let's matching up. Sine B over 8.4, sine 92 over 10.7. Excellent. So we got all that. And then up to here, we got 52 degrees or 128 degrees. Now... Let me check whether 52 and 128, it's going to satisfy. If I add two of the angles out of three, and it's a need to be less than 180 to be included, isn't it? So 144 is not a problem. But look at this. 220 is a lot bigger than 180. 
So we can't use it. Now, the rule is one obtuse angle per triangle. Why? Because when you add a 90 plus 90, it's already 180, which is the sum of um, total uh, sum of a, a triangle. So you cannot have more than one obtuse angle in a triangle. So only answer will be 52. Okay, C is a, okay, that's a acute angle. So it's pretty good. So we're going to get two possible angles. So if I do that, so matching, don't forget the matching up. So sine B over 8.3, sine 29 over 4.9, and then times by 8.3 on both sides. Da, 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 da. And then we get this, 55 when it's the first quadrant, second quadrant when it was obtuse at 125. And if I use that to check, yes, two tri uh, angles add up to 84, two angles add up to 154, they're both less than 180, so there's room for a third angle for a triangle. So, the possible two angles are 55 degrees or 125. Well done, people.